Welcome back guys. Today is November 5th and we're out here in Dinosaur National Monument once again. It's pretty close to my hometown of Vernal, Utah and we're gonna be chasing after Andromeda hopefully getting in two, two and a half hours uh, before the moon rises shortly before 9 p.m. Uh, sunsets at about 10 after 5 and uh, I'm hoping that we can get up and running uh, just before 6.30 or so, so fingers crossed. It's been probably two or three months since I've been able to do any astrophotography, I think since maybe mid to late August, and that's mainly been due to the fact that we've had uh, forest fires all across the western states, and our skies have just been filled with smoke for uh, all of September and probably midway through October. Uh, we did get some precipitation eventually in October and some colder weather and that kind of helped to clear out the skies a little bit. But uh, tomorrow I think we're going to get some winter weather coming through. So tonight is basically my last night of clear skies and temperatures above freezing. So I'm hoping to take advantage of it. And I just want to give you guys a closer look. Uh, technically I'm not in the monument itself, I'm on BLM land across the Green River, but that is Split Mountain. Well, I guess my finger's not going to get in focus, but uh, the Green River cuts through there and makes a really awesome canyon. But that's kind of the, uh, I guess, most well-known feature, at least of this part of Dinosaur National Monument. Uh, as we go over this way more towards the northeast, this is Blue Mountain that you're kind of looking at. It's more, not really much of a mountain, just kind of a, a, a rounded uprising. Uh, but the Colorado border is right over there, and Dinosaur National Monument actually is part in Utah and part in Colorado. So we're going to be shooting somewhere over in this neighborhood uh, towards the northeast, east-northeast. And Dinosaur National Monument is, some of it's Bortle 3. I think uh, over here is more Bortle 2. And we're shooting into uh, Bortle 1 skies. Bortle 1 slash Bortle 2. So we should have some really nice dark skies to take advantage of. And uh, not planning to use any light pollution filters. Just a UV IR cut filter tonight. And hopefully we'll get... Uh, a lot of nice uh, sub exposures with that. So it's about 4 p.m. now, so I'm gonna start getting set up and we'll catch up with you guys in a little bit. Tech AT72 ED2, and I got this uh, over the summer and used it to shoot uh, Neo Wise, but that's about all the use I've got out of it so far. I think uh, it's going to be the perfect uh, focal length for Andromeda and using this 168C APS-C size sensor camera on the back and using the AstroTech flattener. Um, I think it's the first time using that, so we'll see if that uh, does a good job. And we have the UVIR cut filter in there. I also brought a L Pro just in case, but um, I mean, there's absolutely nothing out that way, so it should be pretty, pretty dark uh, where we're shooting. And of course, we are using the EQ6R Pro. 
Um, and I'm kind of thinking about uh, getting it hyper-tuned by that company down in Tucson. So if anyone's watching this and has done business with that company, uh, let me know what you think. Uh, the one gripe that I have with the EQ6R Pro, and I think it's common with a lot of these entry-level mounts, is that the uh, axes are, they kind of stick, so it makes balancing somewhat difficult. You never really know if you're, how good of balance you actually um, have, so um, that's the one thing that I wish uh, was better uh, about this mount, but other than that, it's been good to me, so... Uh, I'm going to get the wires going, and oh yeah, up top we just have this cheap, uh, I think it's like a 200, 190 millimeter guide scope, and a Mead LPIG monochrome tiny little guide cam, so. Alright, it's about 4.30, we're all set up, wired, ready to go, did a test, everything connected, and uh, I just noticed out there in the distance, there's a rancher with a huge herd of sheep. I don't know if you guys will be able to see, but I'll try to get you in focus here. You can see him on his, on his horse, and it's kind of hard to make out the sheep because they kind of blend in, but there are a lot of them. So hopefully we don't get in each other's way, but um, sundown is in about 40 minutes. So we'll catch up with you guys in a little bit. We just got done with our polar alignment and sharp cap and we're showing excellent. I've used sharp cap for my polar alignment for about a year now and I had a pole master before that. I think the pole master might be a little bit quicker because a lot of times in sharp cap I get this message here at the top where um, It'll go several frames in a row and it won't be able to solve for whatever reason. It usually resolves itself, but sometimes it can take um, a minute or two before it does, and that's kind of annoying. So, But uh, other than that, it's it's perform performed well, and for the cost, I think it's a pretty good deal. So we're polar aligned, we did our plate solving, and we're in focus now, and we're pointing over at the domino, and there it is right there with two second exposure. So I'm going to do another go to plus plus here in APT and get it there in the center and then do a longer exposure and get our composition up. We'll try to get it like the guide had it shown here, going corner to corner, and then we'll uh, dial in our exposure. So we're all framed up now, and just doing a test exposure here, 60 seconds, and we'll see uh, what we got. Exposure finished. Just waiting for it to come through. And there she is, M31. One minute exposure. Let's check our stars on the edge. Those are pretty pretty dang good. Those are nice and round. A little stretched up here in the corner, but I think I can live with that down there too. So, all right, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna start off with three minute exposures and maybe I'll do some shorter ones too for the core and maybe to keep some of the, help with keeping some of the star color later on when we get to processing. So we're sitting here waiting for our first three minute exposure and we're guiding. I was a little worried at first when guiding started. We started getting all these corrections, uh, deck corrections going north and then I checked the settings and they were set to exposure guide and deck finished. north only. So I set that back to auto and uh, things started to smooth out. Exposure started. And there's our first three minute exposure with that uh, looks like a plane went through. But those stars are pretty nice and round, even with uh, what was going on here in, in deck. So 
Fingers crossed, things stay good for the rest of the night. No wind, and we get a good two and a half solid hours of really good data. Hey guys, just wanted to check back in with you. It's a little after 8.30 now, and I uh, apologize if there's some buzzing in the audio. I don't know if it's some kind of feedback with the laptop or my battery banks over here, but uh, I noticed that on some of the uh, last few clips that I recorded. But anyway, uh, things have been going really well tonight. Guiding has been excellent. And uh, I'd say pretty much every one of our subs has been 100% um, usable. So I did do a few shorter one minute exposures. I think I did maybe 10 uh, just in case for the very central part of the core. But uh, the rest of these are three minute exposures. And I was tempted to try a few longer ones, but I think. Uh, not going to get greedy. I'm just going to stick with these three minute exposures and the moon's going to be rising in probably about 15-20 minutes so we'll see uh, how much that interferes with with these exposures. It's going to be pretty close uh, to where Andromeda is in the night sky at least uh, as far as the uh, direction wise east northeast so we'll see in a little bit. But I can't wait to get these subs on the computer tomorrow and stack them and, and see what kind of data we got with these really dark skies out here. And I don't know if I'm going to do a, a separate video showing the processing or if I'm going to combine it into this one. But if, if not, then I just want to say uh, thanks for watching, guys. And hopefully this was uh, entertaining or helpful or inspiring to... Uh, anyone that's interested in astrophotography and we'll see you in the next one.